Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some new discoveries coming from our neighbor, Jupiter. Because very recently, the scientists have found even more moons orbiting this huge giant, once again helping this planet become the new record holder. It now contains a total of 92 different moons. But if you watched one of the older videos from a few years ago, you might remember that it was actually Saturn that held the title for the most moon planet in the solar system for a few years now. And so let's talk a little bit more about this, discovering what actually happened here, and if we're going to be finding more moons around these objects in the next few years. But naturally, none of this should really come as a surprise. A lot of these new moons that were recently discovered are extremely small in size. They're basically barely visible with some of the most powerful telescopes we have on planet Earth. And unlike the larger moons of Jupiter, the ones we refer to as Galilean moons, which are thousands of kilometers across, all of these newer moons discovered in the last few years are anywhere from 2 to 5 kilometers across, similar to a typical asteroid found in the asteroid belt. And so, except for the larger moons that have been discovered either decades or even hundreds of years ago, all of these smaller moons can actually only be discovered using relatively similar techniques to how we usually find asteroids. Which was how some of them were discovered initially. But some of these new discoveries were made in a very different way. And actually made for a very different reason as well. The recent discoveries from Saturn and from Jupiter all came as a result of a completely different search. The search for hypothetical Planet 9. The planet suggested to exist a few years ago to explain several anomalies observed in the solar system. If you want to learn more about this, check out some of the previous videos in the description. And so in the process of searching for this hypothetical unusual planet somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system, the scientists in the process have started to discover a lot of additional objects usually asteroids, but in some cases, moons as well. And mostly because during the search, either Jupiter or Saturn, or a lot of other planets, would essentially photobomb the observations. They would be in the same vicinity, in the same view, as the location the scientists were investigating. And so, a few years ago, while observing the night skies, a team of scientists discovered several new moons of Saturn, making Saturn the leader when it comes to the number of moons. Back then it had 83 moons discovered. Here's actually an intriguing graph showing us the number of moons discovered for each individual planet, and you'll notice that most moons were only found in the last couple of decades. And in most cases, these were the results of very thorough asteroid searches. But back then, Saturn was the leader. Although unlike classical moons of Saturn, which usually orbit in the same direction and are also in the same plane of orbit as most of the other moons and of course the rings of Saturn, in this case, all of these new discoveries were orbiting in all sorts of directions, were also obviously much smaller, only 2 to 5 kilometers across, and were also way, way farther away from anything else. Implying, of course, that all of these moons were most likely captured asteroids, possibly from the asteroid belt, possibly from somewhere else. Also back then, the scientists who discovered the moons asked the internet to basically help name them. Although in this case, the names had to be specific. But as far as I know, even four years later now, no name has actually been accepted just yet, and so at least for now these are still unnamed moons. But obviously this was just the first discovery, and as I mentioned in that previous video, it was only a matter of time before Jupiter reclaimed its original crown for the planet with the most moons. It is most massive, so it's only logical to assume that it's going to have more moons. And now, four years later, that's exactly what happened. Pretty much exactly the same scientific team doing pretty much exactly the same science, looking for the planet 9, was now lucky enough to have Jupiter in the same location, which meant that they could now observe very minute motions of various rocks orbiting Jupiter and could now start tracking any potential moons, discovering 12 in total, and 9 of them seem to be quite distant from Jupiter and are orbiting in the opposite direction to everything else, so-called retrograde motion, or the opposite direction of Jupiter's rotation. And that's not unusual at all. The majority of the moons discovered so far have the same type of motion. Most of them orbit against the flow. Whereas the other three moons are much closer to the planet and are orbiting in the same direction. And these are the ones that are kind of intriguing. Because first of all, these three smaller moons are extremely difficult to see, mostly because Jupiter generally outshines them. This planet is much brighter than anything else here. But at the same time, it's very likely, due to their orbit, that they actually formed around the same time as a lot of other moons, and probably formed in the orbit of Jupiter. 
so these might not be asteroids captured from somewhere else. But even though the actual observations were made back in 2021 and 2022, it did take a couple of years to finally confirm their existence and to essentially establish that these were definitely there and these were definitely orbiting around Jupiter. But in this case, despite their orbits, it's still not clear where they actually came from. For example, a while back, a few years ago, there was another series of moons discovered around Jupiter with one moon of particular interest that you see right here, known as Valetudo. This moon surprisingly had a prograde orbit and crossed the orbits of a lot of other retrograde moons. Which actually implied that there was a chance that maybe some of these moons were created in a much larger collision that happened billions of years ago, when larger moons orbiting around Jupiter collided creating a lot of debris in the process. Which would explain why there are so many retrograde moons with a relatively similar orbit, and why so many of them seem to share other properties as well. And so finding more moons and discovering similarities between them might help the scientists figure out their origin and also potentially explain how most of the material around Jupiter came to be as well. Did it actually come from, for example, asteroid belt, or was it formed there initially and basically started to acquire these unusual orbits because of various collisions? At the moment, none of this is really known. Although the other possible explanation also comes from a recent study that was released not so long ago that you can also find in the description below. This study tries to explain something else happening around Jupiter. It tries to explain the difference in numbers of so-called Trojans, the huge asteroids orbiting in the L4, L5 Lagrange points around Jupiter, sharing the same orbit around the Sun that you can kind of see marked in green. Now there are actually tremendous numbers of rocks in these regions, and in the next few years we'll be talking more about them as the NASA's Lucy mission gets to visit them. Also, a video in the description describes this a little bit better. But in a nutshell, the L4 point has approximately one and a half times more asteroids than L5 point. And for a long time, it was a bit of a mystery. But the new paper was able to explain this by showing how Jupiter might have gravitationally affected these objects as it moved across the solar system early on. And specifically, the outward migration of Jupiter at very high speeds would explain why there are more rocks in the L4 Lagrange point. And would also explain how some of them potentially made their way toward Jupiter, started colliding with one another, and created some of the new moons as well. There's obviously no proof of any of this just yet, but it's a pretty good explanation. And just to clarify, all of this would have happened billions of years ago. But in the process would have affected other planets as well, including Saturn, and of course, the early planet Earth. Now we're not sure how exactly this affected us, but it probably had at least some effect by possibly increasing the number of asteroids colliding with the planet. For now we don't really know, but these are definitely really intriguing studies. And so, pretty interesting discovery. Officially Jupiter now has 92 moons, but it's also quite likely that within the next few years this number is probably going to cross 100. Assuming of course that the new telescopes that the scientists are hoping to use for this become operational in the next few years. And so until these discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.